So I had been talking about attire, everything that you are putting on. But what you do with certain things which you have to carry as a part of your protocol whenever you are going for interview or negotiations. Then comes a question of carrying items or carry items. The carry items also have you know some kind of grooming required in terms of how to handle the carry items. Let me go into that. It is very interesting and so far you might not have really paid much attention to it or did not notice it, but after I discuss about these you please pay more attention to it and take your own call you know what you want to do how you want to handle this at, uh, carry items. What are the carry items briefcase or a backpack earlier days during our very younger days we used to see that anybody used to go for any interview they used to carry a briefcase a rectangular box ok very standard manufactured by most popularly manufactured by VIPs and that there also people used to be very very brand conscious that which kind of briefcase or which brand of briefcase he has brought it used to happen ok. Nowadays people go with a backpack which is you know which can be just carried by anybody where you can have your laptops, papers and everything. I will come to what you should do, what you should not do after I first give you the list of all those carry items. See these carry items are not exhaustive let me be very honest. There may be many more, many more items which you can think of add it on and then take decisions. Then the laptop and the laptop bag day by day people are attempting to go with a smaller laptops ok. So, that if they, do, they do not carry a big one heavy one. So, laptop and laptop bag folder and portfolio when you do not have too many things to carry then you carry your folder in a plastic folder all sets. Nowadays of course, we are sometime trying to do without it when we are taking the entire picture in the laptop and we are trying to project there during the interview we are doing that, but quite often people take pride in showing the entire sheet that one has generated in original. So, they carry a big portfolio and that the portfolio is too heavy too big a size does not matter good or bad I am not questioning now the point is these are there either you take almost like a A3 size folder or a legal size folder or you take a big portfolio. Plastic packets I have also seen people coming with their portfolios and other things in a plastic packet. The usual packet which is being delivered by any of those garment shops people have come with that also. Diary a small diary then manual notepad a notepad not a diary a notepad a sp spiraled or wearowed sp notepad ok. Then calculator cell phone very essential nowadays loose papers and then pen ok. Now, see the thing is these are very essential carry items whenever you go somewhere you just think about if if you have gone for any meetings or any interviews most of them were your carry items with you. Now, there are certain things certain grooming is required here also how you handle it. First of all what is important in briefcase or backpack selection the size. I have found that some people when they go for interview they carry their own sky bags also and they do not have any trust on keeping the carry uh, sky bags in the reception. So, the entire enter the room with a sky bag keeping in the corner never do it never do it trust the organization carry only the briefcase or the backpack if at all. I would also say do not carry backpack for interviews never carry it till the reception leave it there under the supervision of the receptionist never take your backpack inside during the interview, because it looks very casual the backpacks are designed in such a manner it looks very casual ok. If you are going for a very formal interview or formal negotiations or formal discussions backpacks are usually not desirable, but what is happening is people are also designing different kind of backpacks which are looking almost like a formal bag. It should not have too many threads or too many uh, you know uh, ribbons floating all around flying all around no backpack should be very then concise crisp ok. So, fall back on some branded companies who are making very good backpacks, but still I would 
advise you very honestly, try to avoid backpacks. If you want, you go with your briefcase. Take your materials out of the backpack and carry in your hand, no problem. I remember when I went for one of my interviews, I had a huge quantity of reports and drawings and other things. No problem, nobody asked me any question. I only requested one thing to the receptionist. Can somebody help me in taking all these things inside the interview room? And they were happily agreeing it and they did it. And when I entered, I said, can I spread it first and then sit for the interview? These are all small, small tips. It will come later. But the thing is, if you have too many things, does not mean that you have to carry a big suitcase inside. Okay? Size, color, freshness, freshness of this briefcase or the backpack if you are carrying, okay? whether it is polished and what is the orientation of it. That means orientation here, this orientation is, has a very uh, peculiar uh, connotations. You know, I told you right in the beginning that when I'll be talking about different cases or examples, it's all drawn from my personal experiences or other other person's experiences heard by me. Orientation. Do you know what happened once? A person went out of station for an interview with a briefcase and he stayed in a hotel in the night. And then he had a sleeper set, a pair of sleepers, which also he carried in the same briefcase because he did not carry anything else except the briefcase and he had a small towel. He knew that in the hotel he will get a towel, but nowadays hotels also get the slippers, but he carried a slipper and a space towel and naturally he was very smart when he went for the interview. He knew that his materials, this materials can always be remaining at the bottom, top part is his papers. So what he did is he divided the whole briefcase into half and then put the sleepers first, then the towel and then few other papers and then something to cover up all those things and then his actual papers. Very unfortunately during the interview when he opened the briefcase, he opened upside down. So what happened is when he opened the briefcase during the interview, first the sleepers came out, then the towel came out. It is worst kind of thing and he was sweating like anything. Everybody was laughing at him and he was sweating like anything. The point is, it is his fault. He only took so much of liberty of using a briefcase which he is carrying for professional purposes and he's, he took the liberty of using this for personal items also. Be very, very careful. That's why I'm saying orientation. It's in which orientation, in case you are bound to do this, I'm not saying it is impossible. In case you are bound to do this, that you are carrying some other personal items in your briefcase, need not be a sleeper, but personal item, then be very careful what is the orientation of your briefcase that you are opening. Be 100 percent sure, if not more, before you open it. Otherwise, it'll, you'll make a mess of it. Okay? Then laptop and laptop bag. Here too, the brand, the laptop's brand. You know, people like to show off their brands. Just like cell phone or smartphones, people are showing off nowadays. A reasonably good cell phone of lesser cost may do almost the entire thing, but people try to show off. And this is almost like, you know, a trend of the current time. So for showing off, somebody may buy, take a laptop which is of certain brands, just to show off. Not necessary maybe, but however, even if it is, then what matters is the brand. One advice I'll tell you, give you here. If you are going for an interview, dear students, let me tell you very frankly, I sit on the other side as an interviewer. Nobody bothers about your brand of the laptop. They don't bother about it. You bring the best brand and the current latest brand in front of me, I'll not look at it also. I'll look at, but it will not influence me. What I'm bothered about is how much you know about things which I'm going to ask you, how much you are good for my company, not the brand, because once you join my company, I may not be able to provide you with that brand. And I am also not sure sitting on the other side of the table, whether it is your own or you have just borrowed. So you are not, never judged based on the brand of the laptop. 
So, it is the not really the brand, but upkeep of the laptop is very important. You brought a laptop with lots of stickers and sellotapes and all that. I have seen such. Why I am raising these points? Because I have seen such kind of minutes. People came with a laptop which is, you know, very unkept. So, okay, it's a brand. It's a upkeeping or that's what I said, freshness, freshness of the laptop, the color, the size. People generally now are tending to bring a small laptop when such kind of, you know, MacBook or certain kind of such things, you know, Mac Air or something which came in the market. People who could afford it, they always carried that, but they always carried the other laptop as well, which is of 15 inch uh, size. Because this, the small one was for impressing the client that look, the latest one, I am carrying a small size, thin one. But as soon as it ultimately he has to work something, he just keeps it aside and works on the other one because he, all his works are in the other laptop. The point is, you are not judged by your laptop quality or such, but you are definitely judged by the freshness of whatever you are bringing in front of us. That is very important. Folder and portfolio, again it matters in terms of color, color of the folder, too striking color, too much of striped, too much of patterned is not desirable. Color, design, size and maintenance. Whatever portfolio you are create, carrying, the folder that you are carrying, at least always be sober in selection of the surface of that. Offices, you know, they have their own sets. The shops are also inquiring about your purpose of carrying this portfolio. Is it for just keeping your drawings or is it for carrying somewhere else? They will advise you that it is better that if you take this, which looks more professional, which looks more corporate, which looks more, you know, official. Take note of it. Plastic packets, I have seen people carrying things in the garment packets. There are chaos created by that. My first suggestion is never carry any of your carry items in a plastic during the interview. Especially the plastics, it makes a lot of additional noise and un, you know, uncomfortable noise, uncomfortable. The moment you unfurl, open the plastics, it starts making noise. When you are taking out your papers out of the plastic bag, it is making noise. I am talking about not such, such folders, I am talking about such plastics which are given by good garment shops, may be looking very good. You may be very happy carrying that, it is very comfortable to carry as well. But the moment you start opening or closing, it makes a lot of you know uncomfortable sounds and those sounds are very, very discouraging and also disturbing. Never carry your any carry material in plastic bags. So, I am saying very, very categorically these few things. When I am saying never, I am very serious about it. You try it yourself and see what is the negativeness that can come out of it. Then comes the diary. The diary, everybody whoever goes for some meeting carries a diary. A diary is required for noting down whatever points are being discussed. I am not talking about, see, all these I am saying, the grooming of all this is not necessarily always for your job interviews. It may be for your meeting, meeting a client, for negotiations, for collaborations, for joint ventures, whatever. So, whenever you are just talking to somebody else or a group, you know, all these are going to play a role. So, do not always consider that all these are said only for your job interviews. No, job interviews once, after that is everyday work where you will be communicating. Okay, what is important in the diary? The size, do not take a too big or too thick a diary. Sometime I have found people carry a thick diary. This may give an impression that he is so busy that every page he has to write. But I will tell you it is really not required. Too thick a diary you keep in front, you know, it unnecessarily becomes a volume which is unnatural, not required. Take a diary which is very, very, you know, not very thick. Then that means the size of the diary, the thickness of the diary, the color of the cover, color of the top, whether it is it's leathered, whether it is you know vaccines or such foam leathers or whether it is paper, whatever, the color. You must have been receiving lots of diaries from your friends and other, other persons. You will find the diary has many of the diaries it, which is well some printed, after that the name of the company is printed very strongly over it. 
because that person wants to give you the diary that every day when you open the diary you at least remember his name. I will request you do not carry such diaries for interviews. Never carry a diary which is going to give a big demonstration of the company who has given it to you. Because what happens is then everybody's eye goes into that you know. In, through the discussion suddenly the eye goes into that oh, the diary has some names what is that name you know it distracts this distraction is not required. Take a diary which almost has nothing on top it is better there may be a small logo small name somewhere but otherwise it is almost clear I am not talking about the pattern but if it has pattern then it is better that it should have self pattern and if it has other colored pattern it should not be contrasting patterns you know it matters a lot. So, the cover, so when you take the diary, think about the size, think about the size, thickness, cover color and other things. Then comes the manual notepad. It is a very good habit to carry a small manual notepad. Nowadays, we have the pocket notepads, you know, spiral one. I am very much used to it. And now, my friends and everybody knows that I always carry this. I do not carry any diary because I have enough time to transfer this information which I am noting down now ultimately take it down to my diary. Today it is half an hour's meeting, one hour's meeting, I will note down on the small mini notebook. Then end of the day when I return back to my office or home, I will just take that notebook out and transfer those points to my actual diary which is going to keep me you know tracked about all the affairs. In that case what I am doing is a small diary which is in my pocket never comes out unless necessary. Second thing is I am not unnecessarily covering you know or occupying a space given by the clients or anybody on a table and I am not demonstrating that I have a thick diary I am very serious about it I am going to write down everything that you say. So, manual notepad you have and another thing is for the same thing for diary as I said for manual notepad also you should be careful about the size, the thickness, the color and the cover. But there is another option nowadays people are using you know all our cell phones has the notebook whatever you want to note down you can always note down there. But I have a suggestion in such cases if you are not carrying any manual notebook neither a diary then in such case you are going to note down on your cell, cell phone but take the permission of the opposite person that I am not carrying any notebook can I note down on my cell phone. This I said in the last one of my last classes take his permission and then note down on that. Okay? And when you are noting down, I have said this here in the cell phone also, you know, it should not make any noise when you are noting down. Some people have a you know tendency of putting the sound mode on for every letter pressed, beep, 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 disturbing, do not do it. Okay? So, now after manual notepad, calculator, calculator you may carry because not necessarily every time you are going to go for interview, you may go for some kind of collaborations and calculations, you know even for negotiations at that point of time you might need calculator. Never ask for calculator from your other side people. Never say <coughs> in course of discussion. Okay, then let me work out what could be the price for this. Uh, can I borrow your calculator? Never do it because if you do it you appear to be unprepared. You have gone there for negotiation and the negotiation may require your calculations and the calculation which you may not do everything mentally. So, what you need to do is you require a calculator. So, you must have a calculator and nowadays you are endowed with a calculator in your cell phone. So, why should you ask for? But if you are still not very comfortable with your cell phone calculator, do not ask carry a small calculator in your pocket along with a small mini notebook and take out the calculator if it is required. Okay? But put the calculator on the soundless mode, silent mode. It should not make every again for calculator every button pressed a bip 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 sound should not. Then comes a cell phone very essential nowadays without cell phone nobody goes anywhere you also should not because if it is available use it the make best use of it all right. But still again the size the brand the sound mode all these are matter of concern. You should not carry a big calculator big cell phone just to demonstrate that you, you are rich and you can have a big cell phone you, know, you can afford to have. See you are never judged by your cell phone size, your laptop brands never judged. You are you may have many reasons by which 
you could buy this. You are judged by yourself, your skill, your intelligence, your knowledge. So, showing somebody a very, very trendy or latest calculator of a big size and ultimately not being able to answer single question, it, the result is 0. So, calculator be careful about the size, uh, sorry cell phone be careful about the size. You should not really demonstrate your possession of costly items through cell phones and other things. And moreover, while you are in conversation or interaction with somebody, do not forget to put the sound mode to silent, silent mode. If you are an entering the interview board, put this on the silent mode first and come out and then again put it on. No, there should be no chance, not even vibration mode. Your cell phone will be on the table or in your pocket. If it is in a vibration mode, suddenly you become alert. See, you are facing an interview, you are talking, you are answering and suddenly in the vibration mode also your cell phone suddenly become active. You know, involuntarily your hand will go here or here, you know, suddenly involuntarily very, very negative. See, basically what I am talking about, I am talking about a very smooth, a very sober way of interacting with others without any interjections, without any interruptions, without any disturbances in the whole process. All these are basically you are once you are in means you are in the process. That process should be very, very smooth and sober. That is why all these suggestions I am giving in terms of grooming. Loose papers. If you are really carrying loose papers which you do require in case, then the size of the paper. Do not carry A4 size papers. You carry the A5, A5 size paper. If you really have to carry white papers for explaining something, then have A5, A5 size paper, not more than that. And take out from your portfolio or take out from your briefcase and put it on your, on your table and take out your pen and other things. Okay? But do not take too many. You should be assessing that in case I need to demonstrate something on a piece of paper, then I am carrying this paper for. Here I have an advice. Do not ever borrow papers from the person whom you have, you have gone to meet. Never say that, yes, I can explain to you on a piece of paper. Um, can I have a piece of paper? Could you please give me one paper? Never do it, never. Because you should be so composed with all your requirements that if you say that I need to demonstrate this on a piece of paper, can I take out the paper from my portfolio? Then you take out the paper quickly and keep it on the table, start sketching on this. This will make a wonderful impression about you that you are very prepared, you are very composed, you are not disturbing others, you are not even begging for a piece of paper. Never beg for a piece of paper, not even a pen. Do not say that, okay, I have the paper, but I forgot to get my pen. Can I borrow a pen? Never do it because these are counterproductive. So, if it is, so if it is loose paper, then it should be not more than A5 because whatever you want to show, you want to write, you can do it within that size. So, if, since it is not too big like A4, then what happens is it does not take much of your space also and it quickly comes out in full piece and then put it over there on the table, does not cover a large area of the table. So, it becomes, becomes very, very composed and then take out your pen or a pencil, whatever you want and draw or write or whatever you demonstrate. Okay? But what is the color of the paper? The color should not be any other like pink, yellow, green, blue. The color of the paper should be white. And then comes the other item, pen. See the brand, brand of the pen, the color of the pen, the working of the pen. This I have said in my earlier class once that handling pen, you need not carry a branded pen. See, people will not get impressed by your Parker pens or Pierre Carl or whatever, of branded brands which they think is a very good brand. People will not be impressed by that. At the same time, people will also not be impressed by the pen that you brought out, which is a throw away 5 rupees, 10 rupees pen. You suddenly bring out a pen from your pocket, which is usually a student use it just for writing something and once the ink is over, throw it away. That also gives a negative impression. So, as I am putting both the sides, as people are not impressed by your highly costly branded pen, 
at the same time people are also not impressed by your very cheap quality pen that you are carrying. So, you should be somewhere in between, make your own judgment. I am not going to give you, you, you here any clues further because then I am going to talk about the brands, no. So, the color, so brand, color and the working and it should work. Test it, I said earlier, test it 10 times that your pen works before you take out the pen from your pocket. Okay? So, this is about the carry items which I thought I should tell you that you should take note of it. If you think there are many other carry items which you got to carry for many reasons, then also try to understand my essences of what I am trying to highlight. Summarily, if I say carry items which, you are, which are going with you must be looking sober, fresh, well kept, well kept, fresh, okay? not too big sizes, just reasonable sizes should not make lot of noise, should not make disturbing noise, should not also become visually disturbing or distracting because of its contrasting colors, should not demonstrate the others like say I said for a diary, you have a diary and then the company's name over there. It should not, whatever you are carrying, first you analyze this, basically how do you prepare. You know, when you go for the interview, you are preparing for all your knowledge, you know. What you do is for any position that you are applying for, you try to gather that what knowledge you have earned for this particular position. What you have learned in the college, you probably open your old notebooks or you open your some books of references or you ask your friends. Basically what you are doing is you are preparing for your answering. So, you are preparing for your answering now, but once you go in, your answering will come a few seconds later. The first thing is the impression, the impression that starts from the reception, impression that also starts from your entry to the office gate, I can tell you. I will tell you a very interesting story on this, which uh, you know, we are really not concerned or conscious about it, it makes a lot of difference. A person who is going for interview in an office, he suddenly thought that he should have a smoke before entering the office building, office premises. So, he was on, on the other side of the footpath and stood in front of the pawn shop, took a cigarette and he was smoking. At that point of time, a friend was passing by and then the, they were chatting for a few moments because he had time in hand and the chatting was in friendly language, a little more casual, little more informal. I should not say how much more, little more informal. And naturally, the friend asked that what you, why you are standing here, he said I am going to go for the interview over here and you know, uh, see they have called, I do not know whether they will take me over there, but they must be having their own candidates. All these informal things that kept on coming and unfortunately, one of the interview selection committee member was passing by. He did not know that this person is going to come for the interview there, but he overheard few of the sentences which was very, you know, unpleasant, did not like it. Okay, after that, that person went in to the office and this fellow enters the office for interview, goes to the reception, waits for the interview and then enters the interview board. He never noticed that this person passed by, but I can tell you one thing, first impression about this personality based on what, how he speaks outside was a poor impression about himself in the eyes, in the mind of that particular person, one of the selection committee member and naturally the success was not positive. You do not know how it happens, standing in a bus stop, waiting for a taxi. A person who is also waiting for a taxi, a taxi comes and then you rush to the taxi and this person also rushes to the taxi and now you fight with him so that you call the taxi wala first, so you get the taxi, you took the taxi, fine. You know the person who was refused may be one of the person who you are going to meet in the interview board. My suggestion friend is this, life is that, that funny, it anything may happen. I would suggest one thing similarly, at least for young people, senior people's people or say experienced people, you might have experience in your own way, something or the other, but I am, my advice to the junior people who are now going for the interview and all, your preparation for personality should start from your home. Preparation for knowledge, you do it at home. Preparation for personality to face the interview should start from your home. 
all these attire selections, carry item selections, and then how you walk out of your house, how you go to the bus stop, or you call a taxi, how you get down there, and then how you walk into the premises, then how you enter into the reception, and then wait for the interview calls, and then you go for the interview, give the interview, and come back, and also your reactions after the interview. You leave the premises, go back home. I will tell you, things matter. You do not know in which situation something may go wrong in the whole process. It is basically, you know, people who do acting in dramatics, if they have a show in the evening, you see them since morning, you watch them from a distance since morning, you will find they already start imbibing the situations and then starts preparing as if the acting, the role that he is going to play that already comes in. So, he starts almost manifesting in the same manner, finishes the play, after that he is relaxed. Okay? Same thing for the interview. For interview, I will tell you, you have to take preparation before, earlier for all other knowledge based preparations, then just for last 2, 3 days till the time that you are leaving your home is for your all other get ups and everything. Then on the way, you should behave as if you have been already appointed. And how should you have behaved if you are an employee of that organization? That is the way you should behave when you are going for the interview. And then after, during the interview, you should behave in such a manner as if you are their employee already. And then once you come out, you also behave in the similar manner as if you are an employee there. That means, your personality should be very positively reflecting. So, there will be a vibes every time. So, take note of this. Do not take it so loosely. Dear friend, you will understand this once you face it negatively or you get the benefit of it. Okay, some few more points I will discuss after this. After that, I will straight away enter into the interviews, how you go for interviews. Wait for it. Thank you.